All right, so in this video, we're going to refactor our CSS to take a much more organized approach and coupled approach to the way that people develop modern applications now with a kind of component mindset. Um, and what I'm basically gonna do here, again, like I've already done this, so we're just gonna walk through it. Um, you Again, you go back to the way we have things set up. I have a home entry point uh, and a uh, about entry point, and they both use the footer. So what I've done here is, first of all, you notice that, okay, I have my style CSS. This is what it used to look like. I've now broken it up into its own separate files, which you may or may not have if you're working with an existing project already, especially if you're using something like SAS or another preprocessor, right? Um, but just to demonstrate the point, I have these global styles up here, right? So these global styles should be applied to every page regardless. Um, these are page specific. So these uh, should only be applied to each separate page. So in other words, you can think of entry point. And then I have shared styles here, which not, not so much as in terms of shared between these two pages, so much as it means that um, this is for the footer component exclusively, which will eventually be shared because the footer component is inside both of these pages, right? So what I've done is I separated them. So I have a globals.css file now, okay? And I have a home, I have the footer component and the about page or component. All right, so now that they're all separated out, first of all, we have easier isolation in a sense of file organization and structure. And now I've also have this ability to kind of couple things, right? So in my home entry file, the first thing I'm gonna do is since this is the entry point, I'm going to make sure that my global styles are imported, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is import my page specific stuff, right? So if the home entry point or uh, module here is my entire page and everything is a child of that, then I'm gonna import these uh, entire page specific things, okay? Same thing for the about page. Just now I have, I'm importing the about CSS. And in the footer, I'm importing its own specific styles which are just related to this module, okay? Um, all right, so now that that's out of the way, one last thing. Um, now that you're going to be importing a bunch of different um, files here, right? There is this kind of annoying thing where, okay, before you remember that I was importing things like that. And that works fine and dandy um, for this file. But, you know, in a bigger app, right, you'd probably have a bunch of subfolders, you know, folders maybe for each page or entry point. And then within each entry point, you'd have a, probably a bunch of nested folders or files for uh, all children components and things like that. So you can imagine that using relative paths can get really annoying when we know exactly where our styles are going to be. Now, if you went full hog on this, right, we probably just put our styles in with our JavaScript. So that way, you know, we really are embracing the component organization. Everything is right next to, uh, everything that's related to a piece of our application is in one spot. However, just to demonstrate a point, I still have my styles separated out here. And to make things much easier, we're going to use a great feature in Webpack called aliases. Um, so note, again, I'm using Webpack 2 here. So the way this works is a little bit different than Webpack 1. Uh, the whole resolve section, I believe, is kind of uh, broken between Webpack 1 and 2. So if you are using Webpack 1, please look up the documentation for that. It's pretty similar and the concept's pretty much the same. Um, so the way resolve works is we're going to make an alias here, alias property, and alias is a hash where, uh, or key values where we have the name or key of the, uh, alias, right. That we want to use instead of the path. And then we give it a path. So this will this will work with files and directories. And if you go to the Webpack documentation, there's a great chart uh, 
by the way, the Webpack 2 docs are great. <laughs> They're not as bad as the Webpack 1 docs. Um, but there's a great chart here that will explain the different ways you can make aliases. Uh, what we want is we basically want a shortcut, so to speak, to our styles folder. So that way, regardless of where I am in here, I can just come up here and import styles. And then right away, we know that we're, we're right in this directory. Okay. And the way we do that is, again, we start with uh, whatever we want it to be called. And again, if you were doing something nested, you can go in here and do that, but I'm just having this uh, root styles folder. So I'm gonna call it styles. And now this is important. We want to correctly resolve the path. Um, so relative to uh, the directory here that we're in, we're going to use underscore underscore dir name, right? So that's a built-in node thing um, that will determine the current directory of like the root from the, the process, I believe. Um, and then we want to, from that root, right, we have source and then styles is the actual folder that we want to reference. Um, and then we're going to wrap that in a path.resolve. So that way, uh, node knows how to resolve the, the uh, child path here to the uh, parent path. And again, this is probably something that you'd want to do just because um, if you have, if you're on Windows, especially, this is probably just safer. Um, but yeah, so again, the alias, uh, the name of the alias is over here and you can give it a, a value of a path. And that way, whenever Webpack sees this thing, styles, it will say, okay, I'm going to prepend this path to it and then it'll correctly resolve that file for you, okay? So again, that just cleans our, our imports up quite a bit. And as you can see, um, in my browser here, if we go here, now we can see, we still just have the one JS file, but if I go here and look at my head, remember before, uh, every time you have a imported CSS file, it would make a style tag. So you now I ha see I have three style tags here in my head. The first one here is for the footer. Next, we got our global styles. And we have this last one here, which is this page specific one, right? And now you might be wondering, why did the footer come first? Well, this is the little bit of annoying thing about using the style loader. Um, not annoying, but just, you know, if ideally writing, if you write correct CSS, none of this should matter. However, keep in mind that the order in which your style tags will be implanted into the DOM will be the order in which they are imported. Now I know what you're thinking, okay, we import this first, right? These globals. Uh, first before the home, which makes sense because that's what happens. This globals come before the home, but why is the footer first? Well, we're importing footer first up here, right? And our footer JS imports the footer styles. So if we don't want the footer to come before these, then we have to take care in which the order we import. So if I move the footer down here, you see, First of all, um, the page reloads because I've actually changed JavaScript, right? So now if we look here, our style, our first style tag is the globals. Next style tag is the uh, home styles. And the last style tag is the footer because now the footer is imported after these and the footer imports these styles, right? So just something to keep in mind when if you have cascading CSS, okay? and it might be a little annoying to import things like this, but there's, again, there's two things that will be happening here. First of all, this is uh, more so important with the style loader, which again, is just a development tool. Um, and uh, later we will be extracting these out into their own uh, file anyways, but it's still something you should keep in mind uh, when you're creating your imports. Cool. So that's pretty much it. Now you can see that this structure is nicely more, or much more organized um, and we've, leverage the power of aliases to make our imports much more cleaner.